Hello everyone, I am Chester44, I'll see you in this play, and welcome to this let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Last episode, we did get a visit to Serpent's Crown. We've taken a look at a few places, managed to get that other coronet we needed, spoke with the people there, found someone who had been left to die, took care of her remains in a way, and, uh, yeah. With all that handled, it's about time for us to actually go into the palace. I'm just gonna do one more run around first, however, just in case there's, uh, people out and about now that it's daytime instead of nighttime. Like, I think this mer- yep, this merchant is here. Una. I'm sure I have the perfect gemstone to match your eyes. Take a look. Okay. Pearlescent rhomboid hellstone. Okay. Goes on the head, grafts shifting chroma. Applies random defensive bonus at the beginning of combat. Ooh, useful. And this grants a couple spells. Nice ones. And the rest are all gems. Okay, so we have items we can sell. Which is basically all of this. And I can sell all of these as well. And a few random capes that don't have any other use. Same with the hoods. I'm gonna hold on to the Valium Trading Company cape, because that's a little fancy. And I can sell those too. These are all potions, and drugs, and the like. And I don't think I really need the rest. There we go. 900 coin. Alright. And we can see if this house over here is now open. Nope, still locked. I mean, I can pick it, but what's even the point, really? I don't know who Lady Apero is. Alright then. In that case, let's go in to the palace and see what we can learn here. Hold a moment. You may visit the palace and its shrine, but be warned. The Queen meets with trading company Vipers. Take care you are not bitten. I have information for the Queen. You will find her in her throne room through the door behind me. Inform the guards of your purpose. Whether the Queen will hear you above the baying of her guests is another matter. Noted. Let me just see if there's anything up here. That's the upper floor. Very well, let's go to the main floor then. Where else? All right, and we go to speak with her. And there sits the queen. While I am flattered by the esteemed Hazanui's confidence, I must wonder how my people are meant to have destroyed an entire colony overnight. The Valian dignitary aims a withering look across the aisle. A middle-aged woman with a square jaw and tar-stained teeth meets it. You tell us. It's no coincidence that your outpost at Port Maje survived the recent storm. She pulls a slender pipe from her pocket, but at a look from the Queen's attendants, she puts it away. You speak as if I could command the tides. While you are casting your blame in a wide net, why not look to our Kahunga allies? We do not share their talent for shaping water. A sizable Almawa standing by the throne takes a bold step forward and flares his nostrils at the assembled dignitaries. A hush falls over the room. I say our guest forgets himself. He clears his throat and sweeps his gaze from Nero to the rest of the room. Brother, stand down. Up to this point, the queen has studied the proceedings with an even expression. She half rises from her throne as she fixates on Prince Ar Aruihi. You are the one who mistakes my throne room for a sparring arena. I say this is beneath us. As Aruihi lowers his head, the queen slowly centers her gaze on you and leaves it there. An interesting visitor in difficult times. You cannot be here to deliver a favorable omen. Though her mouth doesn't move, Onakaza's voice comes to you like an insistent memory nestled among your, sur your surface thoughts. Shake your head. The gods remember the honest, and so do I. 
Allow me to apologize as I toss you before the wolves. Though she turns to the dignitaries, you still feel her attention on you. This one is a watcher blessed by Tangaloa. I suspect that many of our questions about Hasongo will soon be answered. The queen's voice fills the expansive throne room, leaving you with a hushed silence to fill. If it pleases the court, I've journeyed from a crippled portmage. Fuck, I know this one. Her parlor tricks frightened ten years off every sailor in Queen's birth. Raising her hand for silence, Onikaza looks to her brother. He approaches, and they exchange a few words too quietly to hear. She lifts her gaze to you once more. We assembled to discuss the darkening of Hasongo, one of Rawatai's colonies. Watcher, it seems you have the floor. Hmm. It's possible that Aethus only paused at Hasongo on his way to parts unknown. Huh. What sailor's tale is this? There's no sane explanation for what's been happening. You keep waiting for one, it'll be too late. Does tilling the soils of the Eastern Reach drive all men mad? You sound as crazy as the Dawnstar Dreamers. She looks at Adair the way one would look at an especially rabid but fascinating animal. Have you not heard the rumors, Karu? An Adra Colossus marching across the sea. Sailor tales, but credible ones. Nero crosses his arms, looking distinctly uncomfortable. How came a watcher from half the world away to be involved in these happenings? Enlighten the court. <sighs> Bereth herself sent me to track down Aethus. The Lady of Doors must have great confidence in you. Onikaza's tone is amused. Her expression is not. Tracking down a god who stands as tall as a mountain, a fisherman with poor eyesight could do this. My priests will trip over their feet to interpret his divine plan. Watcher, can you cut through the din and tell for what he comes to the dead fire? Yes, I plan on using Audra pillars to track and ultimately confront Aethus. How resourceful of you. The eyes are studded with enough luminous Adra to bankroll an economy. She turns a quiet glance in Nero's direction. I believe our course is clear. We will send the Watcher to Hisongo. Onikaza spreads her hands, calmly assured of her reasoning. Set sail to the west of Nekataka. I would tell you to keep a weather eye out for a lighthouse, but the God of Light did not appreciate competition. Something to add, Hazanui? You have an eager look about you. She believes herself entitled to my ear, I say. Onikaza's gaze wanders back to you only briefly. Only that Hasongo is a Rawataian outpost. It would be useful for the Watcher to take one of ours along. She inclines her chin at another woman standing nearby. Ma'am? A composed Amawa stands at attention, her furrowed brow cleaving down otherwise warm features. By her feet, a colorful bird preens itself without concern. Maya's an expert sailor and a better sharpshooter. The best the Brass Citadel has to offer. She looks you in the eye and gives you a slow nod. Whatever comes your way, she'll see it first. If it gets me and Ashiza out of diplomat duty, we'd set sail with a drunk scolder at the helm. Maya sighs with resignation and nudges her bird affectionately with her toe. Ah, uh, perfecto. Do you mean to stop the Otas by shooting him? Seri Palagina will go with the Watcher. Show her how the Republics handle things. The guard behind him coughs politely. Um, Your Excellency, Palagina Messerai has been... banished? She has been seen in Queen's Bears. I can have a report to headquarters. Nero silences the guard with a withering look and a sharp gesture. You should feel no obligation to take on additional crew. The choice is yours. I'll take Maya. Always good to have a rifle on hand. Say the word and I'll shoot the tip off a green boy's nose. Ishiza looks up at Maya and warbles something agreeable. You're making a mistake, Watcher. In times like these, trustworthy allies are the most valuable asset of all. Calm down, Nero. I'm sure you'll get one of your spies in place eventually. A lazy half-smile tugs at her mouth. In the meantime, Watcher, I hope you'll meet me in the Brass Citadel. There's more for us to discuss among friendlier company. I believe we are finished here. Aruihi? Queen Onikaza rises from her throne and the surrounding guards stand at immediate attention. Aren't we popular? 
Take care at Hasongo. The dead fire was overfull before Aethus blundered in. Honokaza nods to you as she adjourns. Your allies will use you toward any end. Do not give your trust lightly. Onikaza clears her throat and sweeps the room with her gaze. I say it is beyond time our guests lick their wounds somewhere else. He banishes the foreign dignitaries with a swift and unmistakably disgusted wave. I would have taken Palagina. I would have taken both of them, but I don't know where they are. Ah! Maya is a ranger, scout, or geomancer. We're obviously going to go with ranger. I will dismiss Seraphin for now and take Maya so we can look at her. While we have the chance. Let's see. So, Maya, you are a ranger. You are currently wearing sharpshooter's garb. You have a basic arquebus and you have a sword. So you're a range type. Good to know. As for, let's see, reputations. Maya has a negative reaction to people who are cruel or callous toward animals good. Admires people who take responsibility and don't shirk the taxes presented to them. Okay. Dislikes and opposes the native Huana. Ooh. Appreciates jokes and levity in life. Okay. Finds rural and provincial expressions and ways of life charming and endearing. Hmm. Supports Rawatai and the Royal Deadfire Company. And respects those who are independent and resourceful. Please ignore that. Okay. So we know she's a ranger. Fine enough. And it seems she wishes to speak with us. Very well. How about we speak with her? I know exactly what you're thinking. Maya folds her arms and clicks her tongue against the roof of her mouth. And what's that? You're asking yourself, how did I let the Royal Deadfire Company plant an informant in my crew? She chuckles to herself, but there's a note of resignation to it. My superiors might expect me to report in from time to time, but... Don't read too much into it. You're not the only big thing happening around here. No, Aethys is a, a very big thing happening around here. I'm in this for a lot of information, a little diplomacy, and plenty of target practice. At least you're upfront about spying on me. Better that you hear it from me than someone else, right? The company isn't in the business of reassigning officers outside of the mission unless they've got a damn good reason. And you are a damn good reason. Take the compliment. And what if my actions damage the Royal Dead Fire Company? This whole campaign is a risk-benefit analysis. The Navy knows you're a gamble, and they're factoring in all potential losses. Maya wipes a line of black powder from her cheek. Rawatai is here to do some good work, since the Huana can't seem to do it themselves. Maybe just try and stay out of our way. Takehu raises his finger to speak up, but slowly lowers it. Okay. I'm seeking Aethys. I want no part in trading company drama. Then I look forward to seeing how long it takes before you find yourself in someone's back pocket. Oh, well, guess you ought to meet the bird. Ishii is smarter than he looks, but uh, don't expect him to do any tricks. She nods toward the colorful bird of prey hopping around your ankles. Ishii, come. Maya taps her arm with two fingers and clicks her tongue again. That's a good looking bird. The deer raises one hand and waggles his index finger. Hey birdie. Hey birdie. <laughs> Ishiza shows no signs of recognition toward Maya or Adair. Ishiza simply claws at the ground and investigates some bugs a few graceful hops away. Click your tongue like Maya. Cocking his head, Ishiza turns to you with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. Takes practice before he'll listen to you properly, but that's a good start. Adair nods at Ishiza, who bobs his head in response. Adair nods twice, and the large bird replies with two head bobs. Adair begins tilting his head up and down, and Ishiza follows it with rigorous full-body bobs. Encouraged, Adair starts bouncing his own body up and down, at which point Ashiza stops bouncing and watches Adair with cockeyed curiosity. Did your friend suffer a head wound? Before we get into <laughs> No, he waters, just likes animals. I've got a question. Ah, you have a question. Go ahead. You've got a ship and a title. Being captain means more than just wearing a big hat. A lot of tough calls to be made. But I still get the big hat, right? Well, naturally. That's your right. A crew can be like family. They can also be like a nest of squalling infants. Let's say your galley cook was fixing to organize the rest of the crew into a mutiny. How would you handle it? Let's see. I'd get ahead of the problem and compromise with the crew. Sort it out as equals. Interesting. Of course, the only right answer is the one that works in a given time and place. I just wanted to hear yours. 
And what's yours? Ask me again when I'm wearing the big hat. That'll be a different Maya. <laughs> but enough about me. Glad to be aboard, Captain. All right. I had some questions. I've got some answers. You're one of Kana's siblings, aren't you? Sure am. And I heard that you two spent some time together. Funny how the gods toss things together. He came back from the Deerwood with his head full of stories about the Ingwithans. Used them to make an argument for our expansion into the north, and by the gods did people ever listen. He lost some of that childish glow, but the weird ideas stayed with him. You clearly had some sway on his opinions, more than I ever did. Hmm. Wish you had told Kana to give up on the poetry. He's got no ear for it. I did my best to help Kana find the meaning he sought. You kept him alive in any case. While he wandered the lands in search of stories, I do with bullets what Kana did with words. Just in case you were wondering, the comparison ends there. Maya tips her head and studies you to make sure the point came across. Alright then. So tell me about your family. Well, my parents came from the Deadfire. I'm getting a taste of my roots. After they emigrated to Rawatai, their talents caught the Ranganui's eye. He saw them as this spectacle, this achievement of the old country, I guess. So they were honored guests. Not many Huana rose to distinction in Takoa. We were also curiosities. Even as we broke the same bread and tossed back the same wine, the Ranganui's friends always checked under the table to see if I had a tail. Kana thought it was hilarious. Island Amawa aren't that different from coastal Amawa. You're telling me. Growing up in the Ranganui shadow wasn't all bad. We had tutors and advisors at our disposal, and lots of folk from stranger parts than these. I spent my days learning to shoot while my more academic siblings learned to express themselves. I leave you to judge who spent their time better. Fair enough. How did you and Ishiza first get acquainted? I won a shooting competition at the Ranganui's estate. This was a few years before enlisting with the Navy. As a reward, he gave me the freedom of the Royal Airy and said I could take my pick of the Warbirds. Maya kneels and strokes under Ashiza's beak. Stinkfeathers here kicked a rather pretty hawk off my arm so he could have me all to himself. Been inseparable ever since. <laughs> and hello, Ashiza, who's a good bird? The bird cocks his head, his eyes reflecting a mixture of friendly recognition and murderous calculation. Uh-oh. That's his I'm hungry and you're wasting my time face. Better step back, Captain. All right, you seem a decent enough person. So let's see. You have bond, which is a thing. I guess that's to use abilities like that. Ranger aims a spot that will leave a trail to track, inflicting raw damage over time to the target. Heal their animal companion. Dives to a safe distance and gains quick inspiration. Targets the enemy's head, interrupting them. So, you can do aimed shot for higher accuracy, lower action speed. That could be useful. If you have trouble shooting things, I might have you do that. I don't think I have anything Speak else to say. To no. And I doubt anyone What's else has anything you? to say. What can I do you for? Yeah. Oh. Tell me what's on your mind. Uh, how are you feeling, Jody? Have you suffered any recent nightmares? Not a one. Thanks to you, I'm sleeping like a bat. I never knew nothing. Oh, I think we've already so spoken of that. Okay. Me, I'll be and I don't think anyone else has anything to speak of. Okay, so that is actually pretty good. Okay, um... I don't think there's really much else for me to look at or do at the moment. I mean, I could start walking through the place, but there is a fair bit to walk through and explore and the like. Including Prince Aruahi over there, but I kind of feel like I want to, you know, do the exploration after. I guess first I can. Oop. You can just take a look in here, although there's not really anything except this. Water dances in graceful circles around this coral sculpture. That is actually you quite see my neat. adorable fish, Captain. I leave you to guess which of them is real. So, Takehu made him. Okay, fair enough. And up here we have... What mechanism controls this door is unclear. The plate does not budge under your fingers. I see. Okay, fair enough. Alright, let's see what Aruhi has to say, Aruhi has to, say to Takehu. Your coming is a favorable omen already. The prince nods and crosses his arms, a self-satisfied smile on his lips. 
And how's that? You happen by a time when our rivals bicker and tear at each other's throats. Bringing Gatis Chosen on your trek up the mountain. <laughs> it does not take a priest to see how the gods send us an outsider to dig under the skin of our enemies. Well, I'm honored to meet you. Save your manners for my sister. Or hope of fashion me for the arena, not the court. I will not paddle around the island. My sister wants to know if you are as useful as you are disruptive. She trusts me to judge this. You did not come this far to serve the crown, I say. But sailing is an expensive hobby. Though your service can keep your galley stocked. Have any, have any problems with loyalty lately? Nekataka is a city of friends, I say. We exchange so much between districts. Even my sister's advisors dine at the officer's lounge and indulge at the wild mare. I take it you prefer friends to remain close. Here in Serpent's Crown, I can guarantee safety. But cavorting with outsiders, Ikira, that is open water. To Kehu, I must remind you to be vigilant. <laughs> Even though you will ignore my advice. My prince, wild mares could not keep me from the wild mare. <laughs> but I will remember your words. A helpful warning, Herald of Bereth, from one friend to another. I could use some extra coin to outfit the Defiant. Ikera, to patch a hull or stitch a sail is costly when supplies come from distant islands. The city has honest work for those in need, I say, and insists that everyone carry a heavy purse. May I speak with the Queen? I am Onikaza's shield. For a time, let it suffice that we speak with the same authority. My sister and I both value action over fine words. If you can shoulder some of our royal burdens, I know she would be grateful. And what kind of royal burden are we talking about? My sister keeps a tight grip on Nekataka, but the filth of it drips down her palm and into the gullet. He opens his hand for emphasis and wipes it across his shoulder. Under our noses, I say, do foreigners smuggle contraband and pay the rapau for their silence. Take this if you need proof. He tosses you a silver medallion inscribed with valiant honorifics. A Valian Envoy Medallion. The Republics reward these for exemplary service. Akira, you are sharper than my guards for knowing this, I say. An Envoy ship sank a day's voyage out of Nekataka. He wore that on his breast. My guards recovered it in the raid of the gullet. This confirms my suspicion. Nekataka has a pirate problem. Smugglers and thieves cluster like rats in Delver's Row. A growth in the bowels of our city. I want someone to peddle the medallion to the black market, earn the trust of these pirates, and learn how supplies come into my city. His gaze rises to meet yours, cold and calculating. Why do you need a watcher for inspection duty? It must take keen senses to peer through the veil. Aruahi thumbs his jaw and nods to himself. Others will miss the details that stand out to you, I'm thinking. And to what end? It will depend. On what you find, I say. Aruahi folds his arms and scrutinizes the floor between his feet, deep in thought. He's telling the truth, but there's something more to it all the same, and he doesn't trust his face not to betray it. Onikaza leaves this for me to handle. While she worries about the manor, I tidy up the basement. Now tell me what you're holding back. <laughs> I say nothing gets past you. Is there any question why I want you for the job? If we dealt only in pirates, then I would put a trusted agent in rags and send him down hiding in a food wagon. But Akira, I have reason to suspect our problem goes deeper than we know. Hmm. For this, I want an expert. Naturally, you will want to take Ngati's Chosen with you. Me? For what does the lower city need an artist? You mistake me, I say. I send you because of the missive you delivered to my sister. He raises his brow as a silent understanding passes between them. Akira, I did not realize. Takehu nods slowly and folds his arms. Is anyone going to clue me in? I... better if we discuss it on our way down the mountain. Takehu turns to Aruahi who nods in agreement. Be on your guard in the gullet. I fear the caverns run deeper than even Ngati could guess. Okay. So we're going to need to investigate Delver's I Row. I find our city pleasing, watcher. I have questions about you and the Huana. Ikira, both topics I know well. 
How does the caste system work in Nekataka? It is the same in the city as anywhere in the Dead Fire. Mataru judge our souls at birth and organize us for the survival of the tribe. I am not the first to say it, but Nekataka has more walls than beaches, more roads than clearings, and more people than fish. Well, it is a city. Nowhere in the city does a Raparu sit around the same fire as a Mataru. Nekataka tests our traditions, I say. Don't you see that as a contradiction? What man or woman of the Isles does not? <laughs> our ancestors built this place. We are the hermit crab who occupies a fallen shell. It is for my sister and her priest to judge the fit. You and Onikaza represent the Kahanga tribe. Akira, as the largest and most prosperous of the Deadfire tribes, the Kahanga have... some authority to speak for the others. I say Onikaza and I are large stones in a tide pool, standing tall as the water rises to our necks. You don't seem to think much of the trading companies. My sister has mastered the diplomat's tongue, and I am foolish to give her frustrations a loud voice. But Ikera, I pray every day that Ngati tests the outsiders against her tallest waves and longest serpents. The ocean is a few monsters short since the Armada showed up. I think we passed your fish god's trial. Hmm. I... Quite so, Maya. Prince Aruahi turns away, blushing. And what do you think of your sister's rule? We agree on much, I say. The prosperity of the Juana, our burden to appease the gods. Aruahi clears his throat and cranes his neck to tell if anyone is eavesdropping. In the trading companies, Onikaza sees Wodeka testing us, weighing who deserves the Isles. I see Ngate sending krakens of gold and iron against our ship, but arming us with a single harpoon. The gods will judge us by our persistence and our grace before foes. Aruahi inclines his head to Maya. She frowns and glances over her shoulder. What say? One more thing. We should talk about the food shortage in the gullet. Shortage? Are the Raparu not fed the leavings of the Kwaru and Mataru? Uh, let's see. The gullet is in a is in a poor state. There's little enough to go around. Sighing, Prince Aruahi presses his palms together and nods. It is no wonder how Delver's Row won the love of my people, I say. By feeding them when we could not. Find us solutions instead of old problems, I say. The Dawn Stars have agreed to offer a share of their crops to Nekataka. As long as the bulk of it goes to the Raparu. My sister would call this a test from the gods. It is our role to feed the Raparu and we do not pass on our duties to outsiders. Aruahi thumbs his chin, nodding. But I am of a different mind. Nothing pleases Ngati like an unlikely solution, and this is what you bring. Ikira, then let it be so. He nods, a smile parting his lips. If you have more to say, I am not above listening. Okay, that is settled. All right, so we will be speaking with you soon, Takehu. Right now, we're going to look through the various things we have around here and see what's going on. See the rest of the uh, temple, and then we'll have to go talk to other people, get things settled, and do what we can. But, that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Chester44, I'll see you in fly. That is Laniara, Adair, Joti, Takehu, and Maya. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire, and I shall see you all next time.